My message to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Remove yourself from the environments that you do not deem necessary. Divest like they're trying to leave and divest with a bunch of guys that really don't even want them. That's just going to leave them for the streets. Divest yourself and walk away from the communities of people that think that you're supposed to align with them just based off of the color of your skin. There are some people that you need to leave behind. There's some family members that you need to walk away from. There's some friends that you've had in your life, your entire life, and they're not actually doing anything or adding any value into your life. There are some channels that you need to unsubscribe to that is a part of your algorithm, and you need to clean up by deleting, removing, and clearing the cache on your computer, and then going through the people that you subscribe to and saying, yo, I no longer want this type of content to be generated on my YouTube platform because it's toxic. I feel like I need to go and take another shower after I do certain live streams because I just feel like the filth need to be washed from over me because there's spirits and principalities and the things that we take in on a regular basis. When you listen to certain music, it can change your mood. When you take in certain content on a regular basis, it can then normalize things that's traumatic in your life, right? We're overwhelmed with the majority of bad content that programs us to do the wrong things. We see stuff now that you are supposed to be traumatized over or you supposed to jump out of your seat for and we don't even blink no more. It's just normal. It's just normal. It's not even a thing anymore. We don't flip out. We don't trip. We not flinching. We see a chick call a chick a bitch on the street, her best friend a bitch on the street, and that's just normal. White people are scared to walk across the street because they don't want, to, want you to know that they're trying to get away from you because they know that you're going to start targeting them the minute that they walk across the street because they don't want to be associated with the foolishness. And we sitting here talking about being on code. For what? We watch, we watching everything in real time, including the freak Nick hole fallout. Old holes been old holes since holes been hoeing. Bars. Bars. Time dog in the building, so on top of my game, I'm coming in through the ceiling. Yeah. Y'all know that time dog didn't have bars for a long time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We are infected. We have generational curses that we're unable to break away from because we see this as our norm. This is not your culture. This is not what your grandmother had in, envisioned for you as she was uh, planning out what her family was supposed to be. This is not what your grandfather and the people uh, that fought as a part of the civil rights movement fought and died for. This is not what the Freedom Riders was getting their buses torched over. This is not the thing that your ancestors was trying to rescue you from as far as getting you past and, and, and people moving up north in order to get the jobs that was afforded to them and provided from them in order for them to be able to raise their families out of poverty. This is very much the thing that people are running away from once they get over here to the United States of America and they say, you know what? I don't really, I'm not really sure that this is the American dream. We're trying to run away from it. Think about it for a minute. We have the youth determining what happens within the culture. We have the things that we celebrate the most and we champion it even though it's the worst for us. Uh, we have indoctrination camps. We have people unable to make the best decision for themselves. They continue to make the bad decisions financially. They make bad decisions sexually. They make bad decisions. And, and they'll turn around and say, well, Anton, you're the bad guy because who the fuck is you to have something to say? And you've been married for almost 20 years. Who, is, who the fuck is you to give us some advice on how it is that our kids are supposed to act? And you made the best decisions as far as how it is that you're raising your kids. You don't know what it's like to be divorced. Isn't that the very thing that we're supposed to be taking advice from? Nope. We don't want advice from that. We don't want people that's actually a reflection of the community of how we supposed to be. We don't be we don't want to actually help our kids become better versions of ourselves. We're creating demons, spawns from Satan. We're indoctrinating them, we're teaching them to be monsters. 
We allow them to do whatever it is that they want to do. And then, you know, what we do. We hold everybody else accountable for not doing a thing that's in your best interest. And you're not even saving yourself. You won't cut your grass. You think that every wrong thing is right and you will argue me down 24 hours a day, seven days a week as to why we need to be on government assistance. You sitting here fighting for reparations and you can't even clean up your own lawn. No matter where you listen, I heard that Houston's population rate is actually dropping. You know, that's where all the black people are running to. Right. Here's the converse. Uh, the, the, the other side of that conversation, though, right. The additional context. More black people are flooding into Houston, but more people are leaving Houston. So then if you compare the two statistics, then that would lead you to the conclusion that the people that's actually good for the community in Houston is running away from it. And the people that's the worst for it are moving in. Every single city that you go into, you tear it up and then you say, oh, I don't want to come here. I want to go there. Walmart don't even want to open up another store in your community. They said, I don't care how much it's a potential a bag to be waiting over here. I'm not opening up nothing. I'm not opening up. They need metal detectors just to go in the valve mat now, to go into Walmart. It's insane, man. It's absolutely insane. And then I'm the bad guy because I call it out, and you say, like, white people don't have social media or the news. Well, Anton, you're putting it on display for everybody to see. Well, good. Bring back shaming. Bring back shaming. Bring back holding people accountable. Bring back taking people to jail. Throw away the key. Throw away the key. Lock me up. Throw away the key. Bring back sitting the most egregious people on the back of the bus. On the back of the bus. It's people, and it, you know, I, honestly. I feel sorry for, um, I honestly feel sorry for the people that's in the middle class because I'm blessed enough to be able to escape uh, certain environments to where I no longer have to subject myself or my family to anything that's going on here. I feel sorry for the good people, the good people that actually have to endure through this nonsense because they don't have the capacity to just be able to up and move when they want to. It's some good people in Chicago. It's some good people in Detroit. It's some good people in St. Louis. It's some good people all across this country. And they can't get out of their circumstances because they're heavily influenced by and being held accountable by the people that's forcing them to stay on code for the things that's the worst for them. And those are the people that I pray for. I don't pray for you. I don't pray for you that do the things that you should have been arrested for the last 10 times that you got away for, from it or away with it. And because you didn't get arrested and because you can't stop doing it, you're going to get a, you're going to get arrested on the 11th time. And then you're going to have free Ray Ray on a T-shirt. I don't pray for you. I almost and I'm always I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but I got to hold myself accountable and bring myself to the front of the congregation. I almost uh, a couple weeks ago wished death on somebody. I almost wished death on somebody. And then I had to ask God for forgiveness. Because I didn't want to turn into the thing that I hated the most, that I despised the most about our culture. I don't want to turn into that monster. That's the thing that we fought all our lives to get away from when we was trying to get out the hood. Every real dude I know never wanted to stay in the hood. His goal was to get up out of the hood. We didn't want to immerse ourselves in the things that was worse for us. We wanted to get our kids a better opportunity than we had. But if you stick around long enough and let this be a lesson, if you stick around long enough in environments that's not, not conducive for you, Eventually, you'll turn into the very thing that you hate. Thank God that God is on my side and there's people around me to hold me accountable and pull me out of that dark space so that I can then continue to do what it is that I'm supposed to do. And that's my father's work. If you stick around long enough 
and you got 10 friends and all of them is fucked up and you actually had a good spirit when you first met them, eventually your heart will turn black and you'll be just like them. Hear what I'm saying. Eventually your heart will turn black and you'll be just like them. So I don't take in this bullshit no more. I don't give a fuck what no reaction videos is doing. I don't even see it. I don't see none of this shit. The only time that I see it is when it's time for me to address it online because I need to call out the hypocrisy. And I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to do my father's work. And I'm going to bring my bag chasers and the people that's trying to go in the direction that I'm going in with me. We're going to all get there. We're going to get to the promised land. We're not going to be like Moses and Aaron. We're not going to have, the majority of us is not going to have to die off before we get to the land of milk and honey. We all go into the promised land. The first thing that we got to do is cut off the people that's actually holding us back from getting there. No weak links. No more weak links. The weak link is going to drown us all. 